بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز وی آر وی آر لوکنگ ایٹ دا سیکنڈ لرننگ پیتھ ماڈل دا ڈیٹا ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کنٹینیو ٹو ایکسپلور دا ٹاپک یوز کیلکولیٹ ٹو مینوپولیٹ فلٹرس ان دا پریویس ویڈیوز وی ہیو لکڈ ایٹ فنکشنز وچ آر یوزڈ ایز کیلکولیٹ ماڈیفائرز اینڈ ان دا لاسٹ ویڈیو وی ہیڈ اے لک ایٹ دا فنکشن یوز ریلیشن شپ وچ از یوز ٹو make the inactive table relationship as active within the scope of the measure that we are computing and in this video we are going to see that how we can actually change the way filters propagate and this has something to do with the with the cross filter direction and we can see that we are going to uh, change the cross filter direction from one way to bidirectional for this particular topic we are going to use uh, some material from the Web, so from the SharePoint website. So we, I have come to the same folder that we have been using. So there is uh, inside the supporting material, there is this folder calculate related and inside this there is a PBIX file relationships and bi-directional filtering. So you just need to come here and download that this particular file. So we are going to work on this particular file and see how we can use the cross filter direction inside of calculate. So I have actually downloaded this file on my computer and I've opened this file. So if you come in this file, first let me go and see the model view. So let me just uh, zoom this, bit, uh, uh, this, this view a little bit. So here you are seeing that there are four tables. So we have four tables. Two of these tables, products and employees are acting as dimension tables. These two tables are acting as dimension tables and then the other two tables which are manufacturing and salary these are acting as fact tables and we have relationship between the products table and the manufacturing table then we have the relationship between the employees table and the manufacturing table and also the employees table and the salary table so this is a perfect star schema with two fact tables and two dimension tables Then there is also a table where we have a DAX measure by the name of total hours. So let me just go to the data view or the table view and have a look at these tables. So I am inside the employees table first. So this is the first dimension. So I have an employee ID, employee name, and then the age of the employee. Then the second dimension table is the products table. So this is the product ID column, the product name, and the material which is used to manufacture this this particular product then the first fact table is the manufacturing table where i have these two columns as the foreign keys and then there is a column which is hours column which is actually specifying that how much how many hours are required to actually manufacture this particular product and how many hours are spent by the particular employee in manufacturing of this particular product so this is how the manufacturing table is Uh, is uh, uh, looks like and then I have another fact table where I have the employee ID the month and the amount and this is the salary table so this salary table is actually telling that this employee for the for this particular month drew drew this amount of salary so this is how the this is how the tables are actually looking and if I come back to the report view and here you see that there one DAX measure is already part of this so let me just uh, uh, just let me just zoom in a bit so you can see that there is a DAX measure by the name of total hours and it is computing the sum of the manufacturing table hours column so inside the manufacturing table here we have the hours and it is computing the total hours so this is how this entire uh data has been set up and uh, if you come on the first page you are going to see here a couple of visuals so these are just to actually check whether the total hours functionality is working or not so we are not actually going to have a look at this so this is how the file has been set up and you are going to almost see everything in the same way that is there in this particular file so if i come on the second page which is the page by the name of salary there is a uh, question that you can see on the top which says what is the salary of each employee should selecting the values in the slicers have an impact on the salary of the employee so we have what 
what we have here is that we have a simple table visual and we have another visual which is a slicer visual so you can see we are going to have a look at the slicer visual in detail in the next learning path but just remember that this slicer visual is very similar to how you have the filters pane so instead of putting something in this filters pane another visual from the from the native visuals which is the slicer visual uh, it, it can be used in the same way and here we have the product name so the question is that what is the salary of each employee so we if, if I just go to the table view I have a table here by the name of salary and here the salary or the amount paid to each employee in a particular month is shown here in the amount column so I can simply say that I can compute a measure which just computes the salary of the employee by just adding up the amount column so let me just create that measure and then i'm going to bring that measure inside this visual so here you can say that you can see that i have created this total salary measure which is nothing but using the sum function and putting the amount column from the salary table inside this particular sum function and now i'm going to bring this total salary inside this particular visual and you can see that now the salary of each employee is actually seen here so you can see that what is the salary that that was drawn by each employee so we have answered the first part of this particular question which is what is the salary of each employee what is the total salary of each employee and now there is another part which says that should selecting any of the slicers in this product product name slicer visual that I have put so should it have any impact on the employee salary so let's first go and select a few values so I have selected keyboard laptop LED so I am selecting values but there is absolutely no change here and obviously logically this is something that that should also be uh, be the case because selecting a product name has nothing to do with the employee salary and if you come on the data model here if you come in the model view here you can see that the fact table which is the salary table it is just connected to the employees table so there is no relationship between the products table and the salary table so obviously if there is no relationship then obviously there is, should not be any uh, impact of, of selecting anything because there is no filter context so this is something which is very logical and it is working correctly up to this point now let's go to the third page which is which has the name average age and here if you come and see that there is another question which says what is the average age of the employee working on each material so here it is saying that we have materials aluminum carbon plastic and steel and we have to actually compute the average age of the employee which who is working on each of these materials so if i come back again to the model view i have this information of age inside the employee table so i can easily come and i can compute the the average age of the employee which is actually working on the material so let's go and let's compute a measure that computes the average age of the employee and logically it should be very very simple that the average age of the employee is nothing but the average of the employee uh, of the employee column so let's let's go and see that so here you can see that i have computed a measure by the name employee average age and i have used the average function and i have used the age column inside the employees table so now let's bring this employee average age and put it inside this visual so here if you see that i am getting a value which is 26.71 and i am getting the same value for all the materials so what is actually happening why i am getting the same thing because let's uh, recall that we used to see this kind of a result once we did not have any relationship between the tables so this is actually pointing to the same same uh, scenario but if i come here and look at the data model so i have the two dimensions here so material is coming from this and age is coming from this and i have used this age to compute the average employee uh, employee average age but these are related through 
a fact table which is this one and these are the two relationships so if you have a look at the relationship so i have a relationship which is between the product id and the product id and the employee id and the employee id but just look that the the direction of flow of the filters which are required for actually the filter context to happen is from the product table to the manufacturing table and from the employee table to the manufacturing table but there is no filter flow that that is actually happening from this side and it is nothing is coming to this side so the filters are happen are flowing from this to this and this to this but there is no filter flow from this path to this path so we have the option if you remember that if i just come here and if i right click on this and click on properties so i can actually go and change the cross filter direction here so i can change this cross filter direction from single to both and if i just go and click on okay here so you are going to see that now this relation this cross filter direction is now bidirectional so what is this showing so this is showing that the filters can now come from here and now these can they can propagate from here to here so now let's go and have a look at the report view and see if there is any change so yes there is a change and now you can see that the filters are actually flowing and we have the filter context in place and now it seems that the results are 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 actually correct because now the filters have are flowing so you see that the age of the employees the average age of the employees working on aluminum and uh, in the manufacturing is 24.67 carbon 27 and so on and so forth and you can actually because this is a very small table so you can actually go and verify these results but this is not what we actually intend to see here so let's go back to the salary table and salary page and see if this thing that we did has is actually impacted our results in the previous page so now you can see that something weird is happening and what is happening here is that now the computation that we made for the employee salary now the product name filter is actually filtering these tables so this slicer is actually impacting the results of this which actually should not be happening and we saw that this is not happening but now if i go back to the model view and see this particular data model here now i can see that the filters i have given a path to the filter so the filter can flow from here to here then these can flow from here to here and then these filters can flow from here to here as well because remember there is this relationship there also so this is creating a path which is which is illogical and and it can produce ambiguous results so remember that we were talking about bidirectional filtering in the in the previous learning path in the video i told you that we do not want these bidirectional filters and because now i have this bidirectional filter this has allowed to you know allow the filters to flow in a direction which is which is creating a relationship which is actually spoiling my result which is which is making and which is creating ambiguous ambiguity in my data model and i am getting the wrong results so what is the remedy for all of this so what i am going to do right now is that i am going to first come here and i am going to change this uh, relationship back to the single direction and i am going to talk about the tax function which allows us to actually change any relationship in our data model the direction of any relationship within the scope of the dax function so we are going to create a dax measure using the dax function cross filter and we are going to change the relationship from single to bidirectional but that would only happen for the scope of that particular measure and it is not going to affect any other a calculation in our data model and the none of the results that are based on other measures these would be affected so we are not going to change anything in the data model everything that would be done would be within the scope of the dax measure so i have created a dax measure a new dax measure by the name employee age average age and in the bracket i have uh, written cf 
because CF here represents cross filter and here I am using the calculate function and remember the the measure that we have to use is the same measure because we actually want to use the employee average age that we have already computed so I have put the same measure here and now I have put here the cross filter and I have passed to the cross filter the employee ID on the manufacturing table and also the employee ID from the employee table. So remember these are the two columns the primary key and the foreign key which are used to actually make this relationship and then I have specified here something which says both. So I have specified the direction of the cross filter direction. So let's go and see how this cross filter function is defined inside the DAX.guide. So here I am on the DAX.guide website and I want to just have a look at the definition of the cross filter. So it specifies cross filtering direction to be used in the evaluation of a tax expression. The relationship is defined by naming as arguments the two columns that serve as the endpoints. So the endpoints are the two columns which are used uh, to create the relationship which is primary key and foreign key. And here if you look at the syntax, the, you see that we have the left column and you, we have the right column and then there is the third type, uh, the third uh, um, argument which is the cross filter type. So here you can specify whether you want to keep the cross filter type at single, uh, both from left to right or right to left. So here uh, you can actually go and specify. And once you are writing the, the DAX formula, the, the IntelliSense functionality actually goes and show you, shows you what, what is actually uh, happening inside this cross filter direction. So now let's go back and see the, the measure again. So this is how the measure has been has been defined and now let's see how we can actually pull this in the same visual and see what are the results. So I'm going to pull the same measure here and now you can see that see the comparison. So the original measure which was working uh, initially which was initially working once we had the direction physically changed. But now the direction is, is, is single because I reverted it back and you can see that now it is giving us the wrong results. It is, it is, give, it is showing us the results where it, it is not following the, it is not allowing the filter context to happen. But here in this column, you are now actually seeing the filtering which is taking place and that is because of the cross filter direction. And we can go back on the salary page and in the salary page, we can see again that the results have been restored and now the filtering has absolutely no impact on our end results. So this video was actually all about the relationships and the bi-directional filtering and how we can have a scenario whereby enabling bi-directional filtering between the dimension tables and the fact tables can lead, can lead to ambiguity in the data model and can actually lead to wrong results in your analysis. So this video was all about this aspect and we saw that how we can use the cross filter function inside of calculate to actually allow the this bi-directional filtering within the scope of that particular measure without without we going into the data model and changing the direction physically ourselves. So this is a very important topic and you are going to probably find a question related to this. So make sure that you have clearly understood how the bi-directional filtering works and how it can actually impact your data model. A lot of people actually face the challenges in developing real life uh, examples. So you have uh, certain scenarios where you want to actually use this cross filter. Uh, function uh, inside of calculate in a lot of calculations that actually happen for real life reporting. So that was all uh, for this video and I'm going to see you in the next one.